My name is Mark. I'm a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, an uncle, a big brother. I found a nice quote I want to share with you. I don't know who did this, but it's a good quote. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Okay, so we borrow everything. We're leaving today better than we found it, I hope. None of us are going to be here forever. Um, I'm going to take you on a little journey. I'm going to try to explain this process a little bit. Okay? Because I always say this to people, and those of you who have heard me talk before, okay, this is the best thing you've ever done for yourself. And unfortunately, it's probably going to be the hardest thing. Right? But like anything, it's only as hard as you make it. Okay? When I look around this room, I don't know everybody. But I've had the privilege of teaching people for quite a few years now. I've watched many generations of people come in and out of Amity. All right? Of getting a start here. And trying to, uh, as we used to say, get off the back stairs of society and back on the front. Okay? or getting back centered, or if you're looking at it, if you're going down the road of sobriety or the red road, right? Some of us have kind of ran off the road and crashed, all right? Some of us has lived on the edges, and this is about balance and finding the center. It's about learning how to live life, love yourself without using any kind of chemicals, all right? Everybody calls it what nowadays? Recovery. Right? Recovery. I guess we're trying to regain, recover our lives back, right? Okay? RE kind of implies going backwards. So I don't know if I really like that word. Right? Everybody's not really trying to go back to somewhere in their lives. You're trying to get to, uh, you know, instead of going back, okay? Like if this represented something in the past, maybe, oh, I just need to get back there when I was happy and all this stuff, right? Before I started using. I don't know if that's a good place for anybody to go to because it led to you using. So you kind of got to find that third position, a whole new spot to get to, a whole new spot to get to, all right? And this process, the good news is, is it works. If you make it work, you got to put work into it, right? And it's a confusing time. We have so many new people here right now. It's going to really force people, in a way, to grow up real quick, right? We have very few, you know, we don't have a lot of, of, of depth, okay? Because the way this community works, a teaching community, isn't from so much the faculty, it's from each of you. All right? Each of you. Okay? You got to go all in on this thing, all the way in. You know, if you were a beast in your addiction, you got to be a beast in your sobriety. You got to put an equal amount of energy into this. It took a whole lot of energy, right? Dope wasn't just falling, bottles of booze falling out of the clouds, syringes into your arm and neck, you know, pipes shoved in your face. You had to go out and hustle it, find it. It doesn't come without a price, on and on and on. And I'm hoping this talk will help break it down a little bit. It's an old seminar. The title, if you want to write it down, is called Flippo and the Wizard. All right? So I got to break this a little bit, right? Because some of you uh, weren't, weren't even born when that word flip out was around, right? <laughs> okay? So we're going to, but kind of simply put, and I'm going to try to tie this into groups, okay? Circles and motions. Circles and motions, right? 
What is a motion? What is that kind of a shorthand for? Movement, right? Motion implies movement. So here at Amity, we call the exercises we go through to change our attitude, our thinking, right? Cognitive stuff, behavioral changes, emotional work. We go through exercises to improve that. Does that make sense? We have the gym. You go to the gym if you want to work on your body, right? Or you run around to improve your physical, you know? You want to have big arms, what do you do, right? You do curls, a bunch of back arms. You want to have a big chest and back, you do backs. Big legs, you want to do squats. There's specific exercises to work those muscles. So one of the ways of looking at this process is redeveloping your emotional musculature. All right, so I'm going to try to tie in Flippo and the Wizard with emotional work. And we're going to kind of dichotomize it into just two simple ways of looking, right? And then the motions are your out of the group work. The exercises each of you should be working on. Does that make sense? Because you could stop and ask questions too as I get rolling. So motions... If your interview was done correctly, and I'm not talking about the interview you do over a desk or something, I'm talking about the interview where you sat in that room up at the front door and people shared some stories and you shared yours, you make some promises. Your promises are emotion. Hey, I'm gonna participate. Uh, while I'm here, I'm not gonna use any drugs or alcohol or chemicals. That's a big cardinal rule. I'm not going to make any threats, intimidation, acts of violence. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. That's a promise. We're trying to get these all posted up. Each and every one, you'll get a student-centered plan. Okay, what we used to call a treatment plan. Those are just a set of motions. You're agreeing, right? Objective to attain a goal in order to change your life. Okay? So if you choose... To do it, this whole place is set up like an emotional and intellectual gym. Okay? If you participate. If you can get out of the position of spectator. So a lot of you weren't here the last time I did a talk. And we studied family dynamics a little bit. And Alice Miller and kind of the emotional laws of gravity, right? What goes in comes out. That's kind of the short version, right? All the stuff we internalize and swallow when we're growing up sometimes just sits in us, okay? All that stuff they now call PTSD and all this fancy dancy, you know, every year they come up with a new acronym, all right? We've been helping people de deal with trauma before PTSD was even coined. All right, the important thing to focus on is PTG. PTG, post-traumatic growth. You wanna grow bigger than what wounds you, all right? So you gotta kind of, you know, we're very complex. People were very, I'm gonna to try to break it down into kind of Left and right, two things, right? We're way more, you know, we're, we're pretty three-dimensional. But this is just going to be Flippo and the wizard. Kind of our good selves and our bad selves. Every person in the planet has, you know, Carl Jung in psychology talks about the shadow, our shadow side. Everybody has a shadow. You can't have light without darkness, right? I got a t-shirt, you know, stars don't shine without darkness. So we're a mixture of both. It's kind of, which part of yourself do you want to feed? Okay? Which part of yourself do you want to feed? So let's start with Flippo. Now Flippo, where did this name, or Flippa, I guess, if you're a woman, right? Flippo, if you're a guy. Okay? This is that little part of us, you know, the, you know that makes us flip out. Okay? Kind of go crazy. 
you know, wig out, lose your mind, right? You could look at it like the little devil inside of us, all right? Or you can look at it like 12 step, right? That disease is cunning and baffling and seductive. It will whisper in your ear and you will actually be able to uh, kind of bull poop yourself into thinking you're going to do something really good and then you totally screw it up, right? So Flippo pretty much is that part of us. It's the negative, cynical side of ourselves. All right? In fact, let's, here, let's put up some words that define Flippo. Anybody could help me, right? Spaz. Spaz. There we go. You want to do it with a Z? Sure. Spaz. I'll put two in. I like that. <laughs> okay? Spaz out, right? Okay, Flippo is, I'll throw one up, big one, resentful. All right, resentful. Okay, Flippo loves resentment, man. He hoards resentments like gold. Impulsive. Impulsive. Boom. Impul, in, whoops, impulsive. Okay? Dramatic. Right? Dramatic. That will fit too. Dramatic, compulsive, vindictive, right? Narcissistic. Oh man, I can't spell that one for it. <laughs> I knew I was going to. Somebody help me. Narcissistic. Narcissistic. Is that it? Let's get it up here right. We got this on film. It's got to look good. Nar. No C. So we break that Google out. I thought it had a C in it, man. All right. Okay. Good enough. I got my assistant here helping. All right. Okay. Narcissistic, right? Now, I'm going to go, this is a good word to explore. At least it was for me when I came in. You know, I came in at, you guys know this, at, at, not with gray hair at 25, right? 11 years of slamming needles in my arm, all that type of stuff. I was very cynical, man, right? Okay. Somebody wants to find, you know, it comes from the Greek root meaning dog-like, you know, the Greek, uh, the word cynic. But, you know, a cynic knows the price of everything, the value of nothing. Okay? A cynic believes everybody has an ulterior motive. Okay? They're only doing something. A cynic doesn't believe in anything. He always thinks that alternative motive is going, right? Something's happening. You know, uh, why do you want to get to know me, man? You're trying to manipulate me or something, right? Doesn't believe in anything. It's a very bitter, toxic, you know? I mean, I still have kind of a cynical sense of humor. I must admit, right, that's what people tell me, kind of cynical, sarcastic, right? And there's another saying, uh, you know, behind every cynic is a disappointed idealist. Somebody that believed in something at one point in their life and got betrayed and got very, very disappointed. So they're very doubtful. I was very cynical about people at 25, right? I didn't really like myself. And my experiences with other people were not real good. Okay? Were not real good. Okay? Growing up in juvenile hall and foster care and boys camps and county jail, a couple short little bits in prison, made me very cynical about people. Okay? Of both sexes, right? It was kind of a horrible place to be in. All right, so when I came into Amity, like everybody here does, right, I just sat back and punched holes in everything. 
Okay, everything they threw out, I could find a reason why, well, that isn't true, that doesn't work, right? That isn't going to go on. So a cynic is a very, you know, you can stab, a, it's like a double-edged sword. You stab somebody else, but you're stabbing yourself at the same time. It's very, very poisonous. To come back, and then we'll get throw some more up, because there's a lot more. Resentful, okay, this, how many of you relapse? in your process where you sobered up and then, okay. Anybody, and you should study while you're here this process of relapse, okay, so you could prevent your own. Every single person you'll ever talk to, they were resentful when they went out and picked up, okay? They were not in a good mood. They were resenting something. They felt some kind of injustice, right? That became the meditation. That was part of it, right? Not the whole thing. And then, boom, acting off it. Doing the old effort. Okay? The old effort muscle. All right? That's part of that emotional musculature we could get into. Okay? So this guy is always up on our shoulders, or flip up, right? Whispering in our ear. And it's very, very... And unfortunately... We've listened. If I had to draw it out, which you guys know I'm not an artist, when somebody comes into Amity, whether they admit it or not, usually their flippo's about this big. Okay. All right. Not happy. I got to put some hands and some shoes or something on this guy. All right. Okay. Not happy. Really big. All right. Really, really big. All right. And then wizard, right? Okay. The wizard we're going to get into in a while, but wizard's about this big, okay? We'll use something else. So that's just kind of where we're going. All right. What are some other attributes or qualities about Flippo? Flippo hates the truth. Flippo loves to lie, man. Okay? Totally, totally into dishonesty and lying, man. When in doubt, lie. Never tell the truth. Okay? Always keep people right. So lying, dishonesty, malicious. Okay? Another word I can't spell. Malicious. All right? See? Thank you. Thank you. Manipulative. Thank you. Who said that? He's not naive, man. Flippo's sharp, sharp as a tack, man. Okay? Flippo's real, real friggin' bright, man. Okay? Remember, Flippo's almost, uh, Your best friend. you know, that fancy word in psychology, right? Hyper vigilant, man. Flippo's scanning the environment. Okay? Right? Scanning the environment all the time. What's going on, man? All right? He is kind of protective in that, in a weird sort of a way. All right? And he's huge because we've fed this character. Okay? Damn. Flippo's the side of us. You ever clap when somebody breaks something in the dining room? That's Flippo, man. Okay? Ah. Uh, right? That's Flip. Ah. Okay, right? You know, the, you know the person's embarrassed they did that, right? There's like 80 people in there. It's like, it's that little, that little, little, mm. okay, right? Flippo takes pleasure when somebody screws up. He takes pleasure in that, man, okay? Remember, he's very cynical, right? This, is, this, this little part of ourselves is, it's hard to acknowledge, a lot of people can't acknowledge it. They won't acknowledge it. They won't cop to it. Okay? But everybody, ha a priest has this. All right? A medicine woman or medicine man has this side of our character, our nature. Okay? It's just kind of there. Right? It's that balance. It's almost like, you know, it's just that, that both sides of the coin. Right? On that. Oh, yeah. Flippo's arrogant, man. Arrogant. 
Flippo's like, got the, hey, I know what's right. Don't listen to anybody else. Okay? On that. Is he passive aggressive? Maybe. You got to ask yourself that, right? You know, it's a little bit different. Mine, mine was pretty bitter. Marco. Yes, compulsive is up here. Right? Please, you know what a, a hedonistic is? What is that's a fancy word, right? Who can a hedonist? Hedonistic. What does that mean? Wait. One at a time. One at a time. Shh. shh let's. Huh? Seeking self. Right? It's that we want to light up. You know, drugs and alcohol light up the pleasure centers of the brain. Right? A hedonist, man, they want to live in the world of id. They want that pleasure 24-7. 24-7, right? Feel good, feel good, feel good, man. Okay? Dope, sugar, donuts, ice cream, sex, anything that feels good, 24-7. No balance, no middle ground, right? Total extremist. Very, thank you, Denver, on that one. Very judgmental. <laughs> right? That's that part of us on the flagstone looking around just judging. Man, look at these people, man. If I, was, you know, if I wasn't here, I wouldn't even be hanging out with them. Okay? Oh, yes, thanks, Gabe. Did everybody hear what Gabriel said? Selfish, man. Flippo is selfish. Right? Flippo wants everybody to know his or her birthday, but he doesn't or she doesn't know anybody's birthday. What about egotistical? Egotistical. Boom. What does that mean, Tony? Right? Big ego. Right? Big wants to be in control. Right? Wants to be in control. Okay, so I, I, now part of the journey here is, you know, kind of looking within, right? And trying to say, okay, I got this little part. I've done some bad things. All right? We've all done bad things in our addiction. Maybe things we didn't mean to do. Right? That we didn't do, but, you know, and the smoke clears. Okay. I'm going to erase all this. You guys were really helpful. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, let me, let me take a little pause on Flippo and the wizard. Does somebody have a question? Okay. Psychopath, sociopath. Right? All that type of stuff. Okay. Now... I don't know, can you guys see? Okay, let's draw some, okay, I'm going to draw a line here, right? Let's say this is normal, whatever that is, all right? So when we use, it doesn't matter whether it's meth or crack or Budweiser or whatever we're using, right? Pot, heroin, fentanyl. The, the, the list goes on, right? If this is kind of normal and not high, you get high, you zip up, right? You can't stay on the mountaintop forever. So when you come down, I know you guys have seen this in other places probably, you don't come to here, you go below, right? It wears off, you feel worse. You might even feel depressed, right? You say, man, screw this. Snort a line of something, zip. Back on the mountaintop. Right? Or you nod out, right? Okay. What are you doing? I'm partying, right? You know, drooling, right? And all that stuff. Okay. Right? Or you pass out drunk, right? In the friggin' sun or in the snow or something. Or in the sun. It's horrible. You got dust all in your face and you're all sunburnt when you wake up. All right, you come back down, you go back down even lower. 
you go back down even lower, man. So you got to do some more of whatever kind of chemical research you're in, right? Looking for the ultimate high, okay? And then you, right? And you just go, and it, right? And the bottom keeps going. On that, maybe, Denver, maybe. And, you know, for some of us coming into Amity, we're not starting off here. Okay? We're not starting off. We're starting way down here. Okay? And even if you came here from jail or prison, right? You're still not dealing with a lot of stuff because you've got to keep kind of the walls up, right? And all that type of stuff in terms of your feelings. Okay. So we got this little thing going on. So everybody's starting off at a pretty low point. Okay, even though some people come in with a better, a better attitude than others. Okay, some people are, they're, they're here emotionally, but they're smiling, they're getting up cheerful, right? Okay, right? And I'll, I think of Jasmine, okay, Miss Cheerful in the morning when she first got, hey, smiling, everything's everything. Okay, I'm loving Amity. All right, I'm in the desert. She was one of the most cheerful people in the morning I ran into. Okay? I even, I even, I even well, we talk about it, right? This isn't defending, this is saying reality. Okay? Very cheer. Then something else happened. All right? Now, other, but she was here. No doubt about it. Okay? Other people, you know they're there. Right? How are you doing? Fuck you. You know, right? Okay, it's like, Jesus Christ, man. All right? I'm cussing for effect in here, right? Okay? That you know, they're not, they're feeling that it doesn't feel good when all the drugs wear off. It doesn't, man. It doesn't feel good when the walls come down. Okay? So part of this process is like this, emotionally. Okay? So everything else from now, this is emotional work. All right? Okay? Because we know from all the research, trauma, if you grew up with trauma, alcoholism in your family, you know, you're an adult child of an alcoholic, okay? Um, all that stuff retards emotional growth. Okay? I was 25 on the outside. Okay? Grief. All right? Grief gets deep sixed. All right? Maybe there's a lot of death in your family or in your neighborhood or on the res when you were growing up, right? But it's not safe to deal with it emotionally. Grief is a long process, about five years, everything I've read. Okay? It isn't just one, two, three. No matter what the beliefs are around it, right? There's different beliefs with grief. Most people have a real rough time with it, right? Anybody in here lose somebody you really loved? Okay, and it's, it sucks, right? Doesn't seem fair. Okay, I'd get mad at God, everybody. It just fed my flippo. Okay, that put miracle grow on my flippo. All right, that fed my cynicism. There is no God. Okay, how can, you know, all that type of stuff, right? So in the beginning, if you could graph it out, which I don't think you can, but you know, it's an emotional roller coaster ride, particularly the first year of being straight. It's an emotional roller coaster ride, okay? You are thawing out from the inside out as soon, you know, as soon, who's the newest? Alex, you're the newest? Okay, so you're already thawing out and you don't even know it from the inside out, emotionally. Okay? It's good to be aware of this stuff because at some point, it's like being, you know, riding the rapids, if you've ever done that, right? Okay? Down the Grand Canyon, right? Or the Salt River or something. It's like, you know, there's some cool spots and it's like, holy shit, you know? Okay, it gets, it gets scary, man. All right, it gets totally scary, okay? And like a roller coaster ride, you don't want to leap off in the middle of the ride, no matter how much you feel like it. 
to do it, right? So this thawing out, it, it's very, uh, some people don't survive it here. They just bounce out, right? Okay? I'm not saying Jasmine's a bad person. She all of a sudden just kind of bounced out. Wow, that's kind of weird, you know? She was crying to me about her kids and how much she wants to recover and all this type of stuff. And some old banana head Seth shows up and it's like, hey, riding off into the sunset. Okay? Tragic, man. Kind of tragic. You know, I've seen it happen a thousand times. Okay? So we want to, you're not going to avoid your emotional work here. You want to kind of work on your, if you did look, it's a good analogy, I think, you know, your emotional musculature, right? You got to, to develop that, okay? You know, they say in psychology, one of the signs of maturity is the ability to delay gratification, right? The, the whoops, sorry, I forgot to turn off my little ringtone. Lee Cray, man, first three power chords. Native American, all rock and roll is built off those three chords, man. Everybody else stole it from him. All right? Hendrix, everybody, okay? All right, so where was I? Emotional growth, okay. The, um, let me erase this. So you want to work on those muscles. So the ability to delay gratification is a sign of maturity. The ability to withstand ambiguity, which is a fancy word for what? Ambiguity. I could spell this one. <laughs> right? Things are unclear. Okay? It'd be like, you, how many of you ever been to jail or something, right? You, you usually know, unless you're fighting a case, right, there's a lot of ambiguity. Shoot, man, how long am I going to be in here? Might be five years, might be two years, might be six. That's a lot of ambiguity other than knowing, oh, they just gave me 365 days, right? And you start marking it off on the calendar. When you don't know, it's, it's a whole different feeling. All right? You just don't know. But they say one of those signs. So that's, a, that's an emotional component to be able to handle that. Some people go absolute, you know, they go completely bonkers, right? We don't need a lot of ambiguity when we're growing up. We need boundaries, clear-cut expectations, right? For those of you who have kids, that helps mature a child and make them feel secure. You can't just, you know, one day have dinner at, eight, and the next day it's at four, and the day after that it's at three, then it's at seven. It'd just be like too much, on and on and on. Okay, so Flippo comes in with everybody, whether you're conscious of him or her, right? Put some air on this one. And it's pretty big, pretty big. Boom, now we're gonna put the wizard. Now, the wizard, okay, that's our part of ourselves that is, that's our fundamental goodness. That's our humanity, okay? That's the part of us where we don't like to see somebody being bullied, okay? That's the golden rule. Do unto others, right, as you would want done unto you. This is that little part of us, like when we're children, children are innocent, right? If you looked at it as a, as a, uh, as a sun, like a golden orb of energy, any child, any of you when you were born, you were this pure little golden orb of energy, man. Okay? Didn't know too much, totally expecting on the adults, just the bright light, and depending on what happens, right, in life, we start to lose our innocence, okay? So the wizard's the protective, everything you could, the opposite of Flippo, right? That's that little, but this sucker, when we come into Amity, like this big Megillah, right? 
This one, I'm going to use a different, you know, has little rings of protection. Okay? Let's say this is mine, right? So the, by the time I got here, you know, my little wizard was pretty well protected. Okay? And this sucker up here had been driving my life, right? And then we have somebody else, right? This could be... Someone else. You can't see these, right? And these rings could represent your first hurts, right? For me, it was like at seven, finding out I was adopted. Okay? That was that. You know, the first time I got my heart broken by a girl, right? That first love. Um, this was the loneliness I felt when I went to uh, juvenile hall the first time. You know, it was a very odd, <coughs> odd, weird feeling in that little miniature human zoo, right? This could be, uh, well, I'll use my story. Um, you know, this, you know, the inner rings are usually that childhood trauma, right? Stuff that was done to you. Okay, I was molested by a priest, you know, back in here. That was one of those rings too, right? Okay, the... Uh, as you get older, right? Remember the emotional laws of gravity? What goes in comes out. Okay, so when I was a teenager, boom. Right? Got Susan. Hey, let's have a kid. My son Eric was born, right? Intentional. He wasn't a mistake. We were going to build our own family. But I was already hooked on heroin, so I destroyed that. Totally devastated Susan walked out on Eric and then his little sister, Christina, okay, my oldest daughter, right? So these rings went up, kind of flipped what was done to me, what I was doing to people, right? Because every time you, it's that double-edged sword again, every time you hurt somebody, you're stabbing your own heart, your own humanity, if that makes sense, right? So everybody has this. Okay? All right? You're going to have a big one if your parents were alcoholics, man. All kinds of confusion and chaos. Going to foster care. Witnessing violence in the house. All right? Whatever these are for you, you got to identify. Now, the sad thing is, like, if this was me and Lowell, we're never going to connect, right? Because of all these invisible things between us. All right, we're not going to, there's not going to be that intimacy. You know, into me you can see. You know, that's what you have with your husband or wife or special friends or maybe your parents if you're lucky enough or your grandmother, okay? These rings could, you know, represent lots of death. When my grandmother died, okay, who was a safe person. All right, on and on and on. So this process with the groups is kind of peeling away the layer. You can't do them all at once. All right? You've got to kind of start where you can start. All right? I suggest to everybody new, we don't start way back in early childhood. When you get here, you should start with the dirty, rotten stuff you did in your addiction. Okay? It's like the fourth step, first week you're at Amity, man. Except you're not going to go up to anybody and make amends. You're going to start making amends by owning it in front of a group of people. Okay? If you can't name it, you can't claim it. If you can't claim it, you can't change it. So you have to talk about it. All right? For me, my thawing out process in 38 years of listening to people, I'm not that much different. Usually one of the first things you get in touch with is either the grief, now that you're sober, of some loss of some loved ones, and then pretty much, not to sound too corny, your sins, okay? Putting drugs behind, you know, in front of your kids, cheating maybe in relationships, stealing from your family, all right? I had a long list because I was scandalous. All right? Especially when I was using heroin. I didn't care. That was going to come first before everything. Right? 
Where's everybody going, man? Am I boring? <laughs> oh. Okay. The, um, so you want to start there. That's my suggestion, right? Okay, here's where I need, here's some things I'm not, I'm not proud of, man. Because you will remember them. And that's the first challenge. That's why we have groups. You go in there, like some of you are doing, right? Some of you even are putting together your own static groups, which I think is absolutely phenomenal, man. Okay, because that's something you're doing. That's something that isn't scheduled on that board out there. Okay, that Amity's scheduled. You're taking responsibility for your own personal growth. Okay, and I hope you're getting in there and because I had a ton of stuff I was ashamed of. Right? Kind of those take it to the grave type things. Haven't met an addict, alcoholic, whatever we're calling ourselves this year, that didn't. So you want to peel this out, right? In your circles, okay? Then out of group, the trick with the flippo never goes away. All right? Remember, you can't stamp out. Just like your wizard, that fundamentally good magic quality, that part of you that maybe used to believe in Santa Claus, okay? That believes in all the things in life you can't touch. All right? No matter how horrendous life is treated, right? Marco, you talked about Eli, Eli Wiesel, okay, through the concentration camps, saw humanity, lost his whole family, humanity at its worst. He kept his spirit alive, and he didn't get cynical. That's the thing that amazed me about him, all right? The little bit I've read, he did not get cynical through that insane process of when they were trying to exterminate an entire race of people, okay? Burning your own family and having to witness your own children being lit up, okay? In situations, starving, and he kept his little wizard going, man, okay? He didn't become what he hated. Pretty, pretty powerful, but you can't stamp that wizard out. He's protected. You guys got him or her protected in your own heart right now. That little boy, that little girl inside of you. Okay? That's our fundamental protectiveness. Right? That we all have, that you have, Lisa. Right? On, on being a protector, man. Okay? Now this guy comes in. I, I believe everybody, this, this character, you got to wall in, man and shrink, right? I can't draw the square, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> okay? All right? He's not going to go away, but Flippo, you could, the more honest you are, he starts to shrink. <laughs> right? The more you start peeling these layers, he starts to shrink, but you've got to wall him in. I think everybody, and I don't care if you're the most thuggish, crazy-looking, don't want to be here, individual here, right? Inside of you, I know there's a little bit. You don't know what old Amityville is, okay? You don't know what this thing, but there's a piece of you that has maybe a little bit of hope that something's going to be different coming through those arches, right? I believe that. I've witnessed that with thousands of people coming through here. Okay? There's a little bit of hope. So that one's kind of you bring in with you. Boom. The rest of these are motions. Okay? Honesty is emotion. It doesn't just come natural. It didn't for me. Okay? I spent years lying. I spent, we give each other nicknames, right? We don't even use our real names. We put up the mask, the facade. Our own families don't even know us. Lying becomes like a reflex, you know, panic lying. Did you do this? Yeah, I finished it, right? Whatever it might be, whatever it might be. Okay, so honesty, that's a big one. That keeps flippo, that's part of the wall. You want to wall this guy up and shrink him. That's that monster energy again we got, that beast, man. 
Okay? So you got to be aware of it. Grow this one. What's another block in the wall? Fear? Fear? Who said that? Okay, what? Fear of what, Tony? What would you think? Pride? Okay. Pride. <coughs> what is... Huh? Perseverance. perseverance. Okay. What does pride mean and then what does perseverance mean? You don't quit. Okay. And Gabriel, what? On pride? Okay. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear Gabriel? Okay. Right? What else? What else is a good little wall? Humility. Humility. Thank you, Denver. This is, this is a humble process, right? To be humble, to have some, to have some humility. Okay, to reach across to somebody else and ask them for help—that's hard to do. Okay, that's like you know, that that that's that's a big one for some people, right? Some people could do it. Other people, it's like, oh, well, I don't know. Okay. Truth, truth and compassion. Truth. Right? Okay, we'll put in some more, you know, compassion. I'm just going to put, comp, right, having some compassion. Love. Right? Love. love. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> right? Faith, hope, and love. Boom. Faith, hope, and love. <laughs> right? Remember, this guy's all about hate, man. Flippo's a hater, man. <laughs> Straight out hater. Okay? Flippo's always hating on something else, man. You know, right? Flippo, my Flippo's going to hook up with Gabriel's Flippo, and we're going to hate on somebody, man. Right? We're going to bad rap. We're going to make fun of people. Check this lame out over here, man. This little Amity look good, right? Okay? Look at this little brown nose, right? We're going to do all that. Okay? Let's do all this stuff, right? Okay? We're teaching. Wait a sec. We're teaching, right, the wizards the truth. Okay? We say we're our brothers and sisters keepers, right? We're going to hold each other accountable, but Flipples there going, what are you doing, you little rat, you're a snitch? What are you talking about my business for? Okay, you keep my name out of your mouth. Okay, all that stuff that goes on in this room with every generation, right? In terms of the truth. In terms of the truth. Okay? These are some good. Love, having that love, Right? Or the ability to be loved. <laughs> Very good, Corey. Right? To have empathy. What is empathy? What's the difference between sympathy and empathy? Empathy is putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Okay. Empathy. Did everybody hear Sharky? Empathy. The ability to roll reverse or walk in someone else's shoes, right? Okay, instead of like discounting somebody in a group, right? Having all them little evil thoughts going on about somebody as they're talking. Try to put yourself in their shoes for a minute. Well, what is it like to be him? What is it like to be her? Okay? It's kind of the counter of the judge. Right? I'm looking at Lana on the judge, right? The uh, judging, 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 right? And then you've got to say, okay, what is my commonality with this person? Understanding. Understanding. That's the open mind, right? We got compassion, I think, or did I forget? Oh, that was on the other one. Competition. Oh, right here. 
Okay, and then the big one is friendship. True accountability comes from friendships. Friendship comes from all that, right? Right. Did everybody hear Tony? No. Flippo is a big old fear driver, man. He's driven, or she's driven by fear. Right? We could fill the whole whiteboard with Flippo, Flippa's fears. Fears, right? That fear of, man, if you really knew me, you won't like me. If I was really honest with you, right? It's like when you get your first... Anytime I got those first uh, affirmations, I was thinking, oh, man, you don't even know me. Okay, I couldn't even allow myself to accept the affirmation from people when they talk good, right? I was totally comfortable if they were criticizing me, right? Or finding fault, because that was kind of the nature of my house. But man, when they would give, you guys give a ton of affirmation compared to the amity I grew up in, okay? But, you know, there was always that chatter, that little flippo like, you don't, they don't know you. You know, if they knew you did this and this, they wouldn't be standing you up, okay? All that stuff, right? So now, you got to go to the, we're, you guys are doing good, we're almost done, okay? The, the, uh, when you go to the group, okay, when you go to groups, here's the thing. You want to let that, you can let Flippo run around in the group. Okay, Flippo is, you can't threaten anybody with violence in the group, right? You really don't want to call people outside their name if you don't know them a little bit. It's not the way to get to know people, but in our groups, Okay, in a circle, you can let that little dude do the dirty boogie in there. You can yell, you can scream, ah! You know, I hate this place! Okay, right? There was somebody the other day running all down the retreat center screaming, right? Okay, they ran out of our circle. I said, dang, man, I gotta get this dude to do this in the room, not under the trees, okay? You can say you don't have to make sense in a group. You can let Flippo run rampant. You can say your resentments. You can talk crazy. Okay, you don't have to make sense. All right? You can, do, you can have a spaz attack in there. Okay? It should be safe enough to let your hair down, as we used to say, and just let it go, man. Quit trying to look good. Okay? Let that side of you out. Okay? It shouldn't be the whole group, okay? <laughs> right? And some people get afraid to do that because as soon as they start feeling those feelings, they want to get violent. It either goes to their feet or their hands. Okay? You, you're going to witness this in some of your, as soon as somebody's on the verge of being a little emotionally expressive, whoosh, they're up and out. Where are you going? And they're just gone. Okay? And the, and, the, and the trick is you sit on your hands and you hurt if that's what you need to express. If you need this dude to throw a little two-year-old tantrum, okay? You ever see Blessing throw a tantrum? Right? Bite your kneecaps. Can't do that in group, but you can't go bite in somebody's. But, right? It's, it's full-blown, right? Well, we have that in us. We got that. And the group's probably going to be the safest. If you're in there with some mature people that are not going to, you know, take it personal, you can let that devil dance. And then you can start letting the wizard out. Little by little start talking about this. Okay? My grandma had cancer and I stole all of her pain medication. Right? I used to go in my mom's purse and take money, steal my wife's food stamps. Whatever those are for you, okay? Went and pawned my brother's bicycle. Right? 
Let my sister take the blame for something I did. Whatever those things are. Okay? And the trick is to get them down. And then you could hook up in friendship with other people, man. And feel it. And it takes a while. Okay? So the circles you do that. Expression. Then out of the group are your emotions. This is where I'm going to You know, groups are never just once. Okay? It's, it's not just a one-time event. Sometimes you'll feel, if you really push yourself to be honest, it might feel liberating. Emotionally honest. Remember, circles aren't a bunch of talking heads. Giving each other what I call canned data. Okay, groups are emotionally expressive. Not talking about the feeling, expressing the feelings. Right? But you do them in a series of groups. Just like exercise at that warehouse building. All right? Okay? You want to improve your cardiovascular system. You don't just run once around the affirmation circle and go, well, shit, I don't feel any different. Screw that. Right? Or you go on a diet and you... You know, you skip pizza one night or something and say, that doesn't do anything for me. Or you go do one curl, okay, and go, you know, <laughs> nothing's happening, right, or one, whatever it is, okay. It's a series of them, man. It's a whole series of these things. You'll look up, right? So the space in between groups, that's your motions. Okay? You speak out versus acting out. You can act out within reason in the circle. Okay? And then outside the group, you're trying to be polite and do things and whatever your emotions are. Whatever your emotions are. Okay? You might have a motion you give yourself to smile in the morning. Say good morning in whatever language you want to say it to people. Okay? Give a hug. Let somebody hug you. Okay? Without trying to grind on them or something. All right? Just normal little things. You know, practice some healthy affection. Okay? Maybe you're giving yourself the motion of not using profanity and improving your vocabulary while you're here. There's, there's hundreds of motions that you could do here. It's that balance, right? So be aware of this. And then, if you make a mistake here, like I was telling somebody this morning, probably the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to have to acknowledge it and go through some changes. The consequence you get here is mild compared to the consequence you give your person yourselves out there. Okay? You know that better than I do. You know that. So when you see somebody and their flippo's starting to erupt on the say, hey man, get your flippo in check. Okay? Let's take it to a circle. All right? Don't take a big old dump out there in the affirmation circle. All right? Save it for a group. We're going to start posting motions up on that board again. Okay? If you're in, in school, and this is a school, right? I'm supposed to be the principal. You put motions up on that. What do you... I want to see, man, what's Cassidy working on? Cassidy, why aren't your motions up there, right? Or Jason, what are you working on? Right? I mean, just anybody. Okay? And then try. we try to support each other. Hey... Mark, you're not supposed to be cussing, man. Okay, or hey, Bilbo, you said you'd be working out five days a week. I never see you at the gym. Or hey, Jojo, you said you'd be up on time every morning. Right? You said you'd make your bed. Whatever they are. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>